All right, let's review a few other things that we went over in class on Tuesday. Um, we talked about in JavaScript, there's actually, we've talked about the add event listener method, and we're going to use that as an example today to look at the different problems that we might run into when we actually try to make this work across multiple browsers. So we talked, we said before that we could say, um, we could select something. Let's actually add some HTML over here first. H1. All right, so if we added a ID to it of site title, for instance, then we could select that by saying document dot get element by ID of site title. And then that we could add an event listener by saying something like this header dot add event listener. And we could use, say, a click event and then do something whenever that was fired of, say, um, this dot. Oh, let's just change the color of it to red. All right, so if we run it, then whenever we click on that title, it turns red. But we actually have a problem because Add Event Listener doesn't work in every browser. Um, in Internet Explorer, at least in most versions of it, it requires the attach event method. So in Internet Explorer, you'd have to do header dot attach event and you actually have to use a different event name called onclick and then do the same thing. Let me come and say this dot style dot color. So now we've got twice as much code and every time that we'd have to that we'd want to do this we'd have to run them both. And in so if add event listener is not there it's going to cause an error. So we'd actually have to test for it each time, and we'd have to say if, and we can just say if header dot add event listener, and that's going to return false if this method doesn't exist. So if it returns false, we'll have an else statement that says use the add attach event. Clean up the formatting on that. And to be prevent any errors, you know, since there might be an edge case browser out there, we have to come in and say header dot detach event. So this would only um, be shown if this attach event is present. So if there's a third browser that doesn't recognize either one of them, um, then you would you wouldn't have any errors on it at least. All right, so this should still run. That looks like we got a typo somewhere. Ah, else if. All right, so this is what we'd have to do every time in order to get this to run, and obviously that creates quite a bit of code for us to do just to be able to click on something. And so what we can do is actually use a library that has a um, special event or special methods available that goes ahead and takes care of all this checking stuff for us. And so for instance we could use something like jQuery and that's going to load the jQuery library in <coughs> and it would allow us to, to comment all this out. to select with click let me say function and we'll fill out the first part of it here in a second and it uses a little bit different syntax when it's referring to stuff but we could just say color is red then in here we could select it by saying 
site title. So there's a couple things going on here. If we run this, we click on it, it's still doing the same thing. Obviously, there's a lot less code for us to type because it's making advantage of or taking advantage of the click method that jQuery makes available to us. So what's happening here? We've got the dollar sign. You're going to see this a lot. That is setting up a custom object, um, a custom jQuery object, and that allows us to make use of any methods associated with it. So as long as we're using this, then we have access to all the special methods and properties that jQuery makes available to us. And the nice thing about the jQuery library is that when it makes a method available, that's going to be the same method that we use across all browsers. So we don't have to do all the browser testing um, that we would if we were just writing code like this up here, for instance. Okay, so this is uh, jQuery's method of get element by ID. And what it's actually doing is it's going a lot further than just get element by ID because we could select a class in here by using the dot because this is basically using the style of CSS selectors. So anything that we're used to doing in CSS, you know, to write a selector, like in CSS we might write dot site title to select a class, which would select this if it were a class, right? Or we could use H1 to select something, to select an element. Or we could use dot site or pound site title if it had an ID. Well, we can do that same stuff in jQuery, so that makes it a little bit easier. And we are not limited anymore to just selecting by ID. We can select by class names, which J uh, JavaScript has a way to um, get elements by class name, but it's not well supported across all browsers. So again, a library is helping us take care of that. So we've got a much simpler way to actually select um, items in the DOM now and we have all these extra um, options available to us. And so it's doing the same thing. It has a method where you pass a function of something you want to happen into it. And in this case we're saying this. We're using another jQuery method called CSS where we're assigning the color red um, to the color property. And so this would be the equivalent of saying color red in CSS. That's saying the same thing. So the syntax is very similar to CSS in setting your styles here as well. Okay. All right, so that's one way you can do it. One way that I would recommend that's going to be a little bit easier to work with over time is using the on method and actually passing the event name in this way. And on just means it's going to, um, it's still, it's just like add event listener in a way, but it's also going to allow if something gets, if an element gets added into the DOM a little bit later on after the page is loaded, this is still going to um, listen or to assign a listener to those as well once they're added. So it gives you a little more flexibility over time. All right. So let's look at another example of what we can do with jQuery. Um, we've got our accordions. Um, that we set up before and so if we were to use add the jQuery library and also add the jQuery UI which adds a few extra uh, modules that are available and in this case the UI makes available a an accordion method so instead of typing all of this every time and hoping that it works across every browser we could come in and select we want to select with an ID of accordion we're going to come in and say pound accordion and that selected that and then we're going to say let's use the accordion method so if we run with JS we're going to see that it gives us a very nice accordion and you'll see that it actually added in by default here added in a CSS style sheet which is where all the design comes from but you can see here how much easier it is. We've not only created a an accordion that's across browsers, or that works across browsers, but we've also done it with one line of code, basically, or one line of code that we've typed. So this gives us a lot of flexibility as far as being able to do stuff. 
let's take a look and go to jQuery.com. This is what you're going to be wanting to look at is the API documentation. I can find them a little bit easier by looking on the left hand side at the different options that are made available. But if you want to see every possible property and method that's available, just scroll through. You're going to see tons of them over here. There's on that we just talked about. And it gives us a, a lot of different methods that are going to work across browsers, a lot of different ways to select things, just like we would in CSS. A lot of properties, lots of things we can set. And so here's CSS that we talked about. And the important thing is not to remember all of these. There's no point in remembering or in trying to memorize all the different things that are available. Just be familiar with how to read the documentation and how to find things because that's going to be when you have a problem that you need to solve, you need to be able to know where to look, not necessarily remember every possible variation. So let's look at this for instance, look at the documentation on this and you'll see that it actually has two different things it can do. Okay, it's got a, um, actually let's look up here. Let's see if there's two different ways. We can either just pass in a property name or we can pass in a property name and a value. And that's going to do two entirely different things. Um, if you just pass in the property name, then it's actually going to retrieve the current value of that property. So if we came back here and um, didn't pass in red, then we could say alert this. CSS.color and it's going to return the value of it which is RGB 255 and that is the RGB value for red. So that in this case it's not setting it, it's just retrieving it. And then of course if we were to add that second value then it's going to say okay then you want me to actually set a value which in this case we want to be red. All right. So a lot of jQuery properties, or um, excuse me, proper, uh, methods have this sort of functionality available where you can either retrieve it or set it depending on how many uh, arguments you send back through that method. But just be familiar with how to read it. Um, this is saying here, you can either say, um, this is talking about retrieving a property value. You can either send in one or you can actually submit several to get an array of those properties, okay? And the documentation has a lot of examples of different things you can do with it so you can kind of see some working, how all this stuff works and how it doesn't. You see it's showing you how to get some, inf retrieve some information about it or to set it, in this case it'll be to set it. For instance, this one, you know, we said if it has multiple values, it also says if you just do the CSS and submit a an object with properties in it, it'll do that as well. So we could come in and instead of doing color red, we could say, let's create a, a custom object. And we want to say color is red and font size is oh, 10 picks and then we actually pass that in here and I didn't test this ahead of time a lot of times Depends on your syntax, but sometimes it's helpful to put this in quotes. And you can see it's going to assign it and change the font size as well. So you can actually pass in multiple in one CSS by calling it once and passing in multiple methods. 
Okay, so that's what it means when it says you can pass an object in that has property value pairs to set. That's what we're doing here, is setting property value pairs inside of our object as properties. Okay, so do be familiar in how to read the documentation and don't be so worried about trying to memorize what all the things are, what all are available. Also, if you go up here to the top, you can go to jQueryUI.com and that's the library that adds on to jQuery. You have to have jQuery first in order to use this one, but it makes available adding like we did earlier, adding accordions, you can add buttons, um, tabs, sliders, you know, things like that. You can make things draggable, droppable. So you can kind of, this is sort of an interaction library. It allows us to, you know, um, give our users the ability to interact with things, resize them, do you know, whatever they need to, which is helpful for trying to build a web application or something like that.